Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at some various different types of styluses. Now I have six different types of styluses in front of me, which I have, whoops, which I have uh, bought during the years. Actually not this one, though this one just uh, comes free with some uh, stuff that you buy or when you, whenever you go to a tech store or something. But yeah, uh, these are the things... Uh, these are the styluses that I've gathered through the years, and I would like to go through their usages, their advantages and disadvantages, and uh, come to a conclusion on which one is the best, and which one is the worst, and which ones you should uh, completely stay away from. So, let's begin with the ones that I would not recommend, which are these two. Well, so this one is, uh, I'm sure you've seen this being used here and there. This is This just has like a very thick foam coating which is supposed to uh, re basically replicate your thumb or, or your fingers not super accurate but I, I guess it works in instances where you don't really want to touch your phone or uh, yeah I don't really see any other use case for this specific type but yeah very inaccurate I guess I have used it sometimes to draw something on my Instagram story, so I guess it's good for that. But other than that, not a good experience at all. You you cannot rely on it for any type of note-taking. This is just, I don't know, it's kind of useless to be honest. Now, we get to this one. Uh, so, this one is the Adonit Jot Dash. It's It, it looks really good actually, to be honest. I, I, I still love the way it looks after like or five years of having bought it. Uh, it looks great. It uses a proprietary charger, USB-A on one side and this uh, magnetic charger on the other side, which actually broke after a couple of years of not using it. Uh, it, it used to be really cool, actually. It, you, you'd you know, stick it into your laptop and then put this on top, but it's not really working anymore. It's not charging. It's not about just the magnet's not fitting right anymore. It, it just doesn't charge and the pen itself is broken. And uh, I, I contacted Adonis. They didn't really do anything. Uh, they just said, try this and that. And I've already tried this and that. And it didn't uh, really work. However, now the experience itself before it broke, it feels very good in the hand. There is a noticeable weight shift from like the uh, empty... Uh, middle parts and probably even the bottom part but there's the battery on the top which makes it very top heavy uh, but other than that it feels very good uh, the nib itself is much more precise than uh, this one say for example but still not a good experience when it comes to actual note-taking because I used to uh, I bought this to use on my uh, iPad mini 2 uh, I had uh, Penultimate and Evernote on it, uh, but uh, and, and there was this feature that would zoom in on a portion of the display so that you would be able to write even with a non-precise uh, stylus, but it just wasn't an intuitive experience and I ended up not using this a whole lot. And uh, actually I dropped it once or twice and one time, uh, the very thin rubber coating on the nib actually got cut or uh, got separated from the rest of it and I couldn't push it back into uh, the body so it, it was permanently damaged it didn't really impact the uh, precision but it just looks kind of off and I can't really show it to you because it's so very small uh, but yeah not a great experience it was actually kind of expensive at the time I don't really remember maybe it was like 50 something dollars yeah, it was probably 50 or $60 at the time. I think there are newer versions of this. But yeah, don't buy this. It looks great, but it doesn't really work the way you want it to, which is to say if you're looking for something to take notes with. Uh, if you're just looking for something to just use on your smartphone, this this does the job, really. Go with this one. Uh, or any other type of you know, foam capacitive uh, stylus. Now, uh, between these two... Uh, this one comes from a pen tablet, a relatively inexpensive one, uh, made by Artisol. Uh, and this is, of course, the Surface Pen, uh, which came in the box with the Surface Pro 4. However, I would actually go with this one as the worst option. 
Uh, this is not a very enjoyable experience. The eraser function is very cool. It used to click, now it kind of clicks, but you don't really hear the click or it doesn't really go down. It's very mushy. Uh, it used to bring up one note every now and then. Uh, and uh, the, no, the pen itself, I actually uh, have the uh, replacement tips. I use them all and the one it actually comes with is the best one, uh, which broke so I had to buy the replacement uh, set. But yeah, the HP one is the best one. Uh, because there is this rubber padding, if you can say, if you can call it that, at the end of the nib, which acts as like a friction to sort of replicate the feeling of uh, actually writing on paper, which does the job fairly well compared to the other ones. Uh, however, the overall experience with the Surface Pro is not a very good one. And that's not necessarily because of the pen itself. I think the pen itself is pretty good. But the Entrick technology and uh, uh, the fact that there's a lot of parallax, which is to say that when, you know, so this part, the, the uh, nib is touching the display, always a couple of pixels next to where the uh, display is actually registering the touch. So it's always going to be off a couple of pixels from where you actually want it to be, which is, of course, very annoying. Uh, so yeah, the, the, the overall experience wasn't very good. I mean, uh, it would attach magnetically to the side of the Surface Pro, but the display uh, was actually so big, it would wobble, it, it would actually flex whenever I would write something on it, and it was actually kind of noticeable. And uh, OneNote, which is I think the main app that everyone really uses on their Surface Pro for uh, note-taking, is a terrible app, really, compared to anything you can find on iPad, no, OneNote is a terrible app. It is very unreliable. The cloud syncing doesn't work half the time. You can't export PDFs. You can't import PDFs. You can't do anything on it. And when you can, it's not very good. So there's that. And there is actually no option to, because you know, when you write on OneNote, the pressure sensitivity is always on and there is no option to turn it off. And I, I like my lines to be of the same length, you know, as you would with a regular pen, uh, not a calligraphy pen. This is always going to act as a calligraphy pen in OneNote. Not a good experience, but it works. I mean, in the end, it's not terrible, but definitely not the best option. Then we get to this one, which again, it comes from a relatively inexpensive pen tablet, which you would hook up with your computer. Uh, there's a learning curve to mastering how you would use this uh, by not looking at it because you actually have to be looking at the display and uh, your hand has to be doing the coordination between what you see and what you actually are doing. So there's a bit of a learning curve, but it's uh, fairly accurate. There's much less wobble when you're, uh, when you're uh, you know, drawing a diagonal line, which happens a lot in Surface. And uh, there are a couple of shortcuts here, a couple of shortcuts here, here. Yeah, there are a couple of buttons here. And the pencil, it's, uh, the, the uh, eraser function is still here, but it's not as nice feeling as the surfaces because it actually feels like an eraser uh, tip. Uh, but this one is just plastic. It's hard plastic, but it works. The pen nib, uh, you know, uh, when you use it with the uh, surface of the... Uh, pen tablet itself. It's not actually that bad, even though this is like hard plastic and this is basically plastic, but there is a little bit of friction here. So it works really well, actually. And the accuracy, like I said, is very good. Uh, there's just the learning curve that you really need to uh, pay attention to. It's going to take some time, but it works really well, actually. Uh, I uh, very much like this one. However, absolutely not as much as I like uh, these two. Uh, the first gen iPad pencil and sorry, the first gen Apple pencil and the second gen Apple pencil. I actually have both of them because uh, I had an iPad 10.5 inch, uh, the, the Pro model from 2017, which broke. So I still haven't been able to sell this one. Uh, so I still have it. And uh, then I had to buy the 2018 iPad Pro. So I have this one because unfortunately, uh, the previous generation doesn't work with the current generation of iPad Pros. 
Uh, however, the uh, drawing and writing experience and note-taking experience of both of these have been extremely solid in terms of how they actually uh, interact with the display. They're identical. There are just a couple of features and some design tweaks on this one, the matte one, the second gen model, which makes it a little bit better and I think worth the uh, $30 price difference. So phenomenal writing experience. There's really nothing I can complain about. Uh, so you, you can't really go wrong with this one. If you are looking for something to just take notes with or to draw with, if you want to draw, this this works really well. Do not, absolutely do not go with the Surface Pen or any Surface device if you're going to be relying on this for drawing. Don't do that. It's a terrible experience. The parallax is is going to throw you off. You can't draw a diagonal line perfectly with it. There's always going to be a wobble, if, even if you use a ruler. Do not buy a Surface device if you want to draw. For note-taking, it's all right. Not super great, but it's all right. But for drawing, go with this one, even if you have a Surface. Go with this one. It's much more accurate. Yeah, it's something you have to carry around with, but uh, it's, a, it's a, a, actually a usable experience. The Surface Pro is not a usable experience if you want to draw. It's, it's that bad for drawing, I tell you. Uh, but uh, if you uh, don't need a Windows device, go with this one, go with the iPad. Uh, I have a separate video on iPad, uh, but uh, essentially if, you, if there are no apps specifically that you need to have on your Windows device, try to familiarize yourself with the iPad ecosystem. And I think you're not gonna be disappointed because this is make, it, this is going to make it worth your while, right? This is just like 10 times uh, better the experience that the Surface Pen is going to give to you. All right, so this has been it. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Cheers.